Why isn't everybody doing this? In this episode, we are going to address a very common question that I've gotten for more than 45 years. Tax-free investing? That sounds too good to be true. What's the catch? Well, you're going to find out it isn't too good to be true. It really is true. So my name is Doug Andrew, and I've been a financial strategist for more than 45 years, retirement planning specialist. I help people minimize taxes and choose the right investments and savings vehicles based upon liquidity, safety, earning predictable rates of return that are tax free. I wish I had a nickel <laughs> for every time somebody has asked me this question. Tax free? Uh, what's tax free? Sounds too good to be true. Uh, come on, Doug, what's the catch? <laughs> well, okay, let me tell you what the catch is. If uh, you had a vehicle, that you could put your money into and uh, you could determine how much you wanted to set aside every year and uh, there wasn't some, some government regulation where if you had a banner year and you wanted to set aside 200 or 300,000, they say, no, 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 you can't save that much tax-free. Uh, and so you can put in as much as you want. If you don't put in very much, you can make up for years that you didn't put in the maximum that you could have put in. I can access money before age 59 and a half without any IRS penalties. And so it grows tax-free. When I take out money anytime, it uh, is tax-free. I don't have to report it on my 1040 tax return, even though the IRS knows I receive it. And every million dollars generates 80 to 100,000 a year of tax-free cash flow into perpetuity if I live to be 120. And when I ultimately die, the amount I leave behind actually blossoms in value and transfers tax-free. <laughs> Sometimes uh, when I say, what would you call that? And uh, the most common answer I get is a miracle, a godsend in this uh, time of being topsy-turvy and whipsaw in the markets and so forth. Yeah, well, people say that sounds too good to be true. Well, it isn't because this is a max-funded indexed universal life insurance contract. It's what I uh, affectionately have called and named the laser fund in so much that I've written a book titled the laser fund. And so let me share with you why it's tax free and why it's grandfathered under the internal revenue code and why it's such a sacred cow. As a speaker, oft times I will ask my audiences if what you always thought to be true turned out not to be true, when would you want to know? And they say, well, sooner than later. I say, well, let's flip it. If what you always thought not to be true ended up being true, when would you want to know? Uh, sooner than later. Well, how many of you have always thought that a life insurance policy uh, was not a good investment. And they raise their hands. I go, well, you don't know what you don't know because you can't be aware of something you're not aware of. And then I will say, what would you call something that does all these things? Accumulates your money tax-free, has all this flexibility. You can access your money tax-free. When you die, it blossoms and transfers tax-free. And they always go, well, that sounds like a miracle. Too good to be true. Well, no. Max funded uh, insurance has done that ever since E.F. Hutton, who's the brainchild behind Universal Life, came out with this idea in 1980. Up until that point, I was a big buy term insurance, invest the difference proponent. But all E.F. Hutton said is, why don't we buy term and invest the difference under a tax free umbrella? Hello? And so that's all a max funded universal life is. And then in 1997, indexed universal life came out and I was able to tweak my rate of return. See, up until that point, my average rate of return was about 8.2%. Some years I earned 15% or higher, but the average was 8.2. When indexing came out, it went up by two percentage points to about 10.07. 
because of indexing, allowing my money to participate when the market does well without my money at risk in the market. And that's the beauty of indexing. It's not an index mutual fund. And if you uh, watch different videos on this channel, subscribers uh, get answers to questions. Well, what, what's indexing and how does it work? So be sure you search uh, for answers to other questions that are related to this one. Now, when we talk about uh, how long this has been around, See, uh, insurance contracts, insurance policies have been sort of a sacred cow in the Internal Revenue Code since before the code. We go clear back to 1913, 1916 and all that. That's when the Internal Revenue Code as we know it today came uh, into existence. And uh, life insurance has always uh, allowed people to accumulate their money tax-free because uh, it is taking pressure off of the government to take care of widows and orphans. Why would they penalize somebody who is trying to insure themselves so that if they die uh, prematurely or if they use it for retirement, that they are trying to be self-reliant, to take pressure off of the government? So why would they penalize people by taxing that? So they've always been tax-free as it grows. Uh, when you access money for living benefits, you're going to take pressure off of the government to take care of you and go on welfare or something or have to give you more social security benefits or whatever. And so it's tax-free when you take it out. And when you die and you leave it behind to your beneficiaries, uh, why would they penalize you for helping them be able to continue to be financially independent? So it's tax-free. Those are under three sections of the Internal Revenue Code that have been around for over 100 years. They're now known as Section 72E, 7702, and 101A. Allows you to accumulate your money tax-free, access your money tax-free, and when you die, it blossoms, increases in value, and transfers income tax-free. There is no other financial instrument in the Internal Revenue Code that does that. So. No, it may sound too good to be true, but it's true and it's been there for a hundred years. And people say, well, how come everybody isn't doing this? How come I haven't heard about it? Well, it's because maybe you haven't been studying or listening or you've been following the herd because unfortunately the financial services industry has been taught to just get people to put money in the market and churn your money because that's where they make money. They don't want you to know. They don't even teach their advisors about this. But every time I teach advanced continuing education to CPAs, tax attorneys, financial advisors, and they really learn this, they go, I never knew this. This almost sounds too good to be true. I remember teaching a fellow that was on CNBC, their financial hour, all the time he was recognized nationally. He came through my training and he went, why have I been recommending annuities? IUL, Index Universal Life, knocks the socks off of these annuities. I'm embarrassed to go back to these people. I said, well, you didn't know what you didn't know. You sold them something that was good, but it wasn't the best. Now you know better. I remember when I published my first book, self-published it. It got the attention of Time Warner, Warner Business Books. And I was talking with the number one business editor in the world, Mr. Rick Wolf. And uh, he commissioned me to write my second, third, fourth book. My second book was called Missed Fortune 101. My third was Last Chance Millionaire, which we were blessed. It became a New York Times and Wall Street Journal number one bestseller. And as I was sitting in his office in a skyscraper in New York, he said, Doug, you must write a book titled, Why Didn't My Advisor Tell Me About This? Yep, because uh, a lot of advisors are not taught or trained in how to uh, structure these correctly. And so they poo-poo them because they simply don't know what they don't know because you can't be aware of something you're not aware of. So in my most recent best-selling book, it's The Laser Fund. It's actually uh, two books in one. This is the left brain containing uh, 14 chapters with charts, graphs, and explanations. Uh, this side is 12 chapters containing 62 actual client stories. But on the right brain side, on chapter 11, after we teach the reader all of the nitty gritty why this is so incredible and why it's been around, it's, it's not too good to be true, I say, why isn't everybody doing this? And there's actually 10 reasons inside this book and it's lack of awareness. Many times advisors simply take the path of least resistance 
They say, oh, it's too much work to structure these things. I just want their name, address, social security number, and a check. They're selling uh, the golf clubs instead of teaching you the swing. They're selling you a commodity. It's not in the commodity, it's in the strategy. We teach strategy on how to use these universal life insurance for tax-free accumulation and tax-free access. Oh, it's not as lucrative. We don't make as much money. No, they make way more money by churning your money in the market. Oh, you should only have so much in insurance. Well, I would recommend 40 to 60% of your retirement income be tax-free. So that's why it's my favorite vehicle out of four for people's retirement income. Isn't insurance too expensive? When I show them that the insurance is paid for with otherwise payable income tax, it's basically coming along for the ride free. Now, nothing is free, but I'm not paying for it. It's being paid for with otherwise payable tax that I would have to incur if I chose to put my money in inferior vehicles like IRAs and 401ks. Isn't it only for the wealthy? <laughs> No, the wealthy do this because they can't put money in a Roth. So they put it in this, but you don't have to be wealthy to do this. You can sock away 500 bucks a month in one of these. Hardly anyone's doing this, right? Well, in my circles, everybody, hundreds of thousands of people are doing this. If you're not, you need to learn why. If it's so good, uh, why don't you call it an investment? Well, the financial services industry seems to call an investment something that uh, sooner or later you will have to pay tax. I don't want something that you have to pay tax on if I can avoid that. So why do I want an investment? And also investments are typically subject to market volatility. Okay. Well, I don't want to be subject to market volatility. So it's not an investment. It's an insurance contract. And under that definition, it's tax free under three sections of the code. So if that intrigues you, uh, I would encourage you to get a copy of this book. Now I'm not here trying to sell you a book. I will pay for the book. You pay $5.95 shipping and handling. Go to uh, Laser Fund, laserfund.com. Pay $5.95 shipping and handling, and I will fire out a copy of this book to you. There'll be all kinds of other formats like audio and digital if you like to watch and learn or listen and learn. But my invitation is for you to get empowered, and you'll see that uh, it's not too good to be true, and you'll understand why everybody's not doing it, but you ought to be doing it.